Hi. <laughs> uh, as it's written there, my name is Uliana, Uliana Bashchuk. Um, and today I'm going to talk about the courage to lead through collaborative decision making. Uh, why is that uh, topic important? In Bible, uh, they say that if we disobey the great authority, we get ejected from paradise. In aviation in the old days, uh, captain was a king. Uh, nobody questioned his decisions, uh, even if pilots noticed, like co-pilots noticed any mistakes. Maybe it was out of respect or maybe out of fear. But uh, since this behavior was discovered, uh, airlines started to train their pilots in their teams uh, to talk openly about any concerns they may have. And this minor improvement has brought to the safety in airlines uh, more in, anti in the last 20 years than any other uh, advancements have. So, yeah, that, that highlights a little bit the importance of the topic uh, that I'm going to talk about. Uh, but uh, before we start, uh, I want to tell a couple of words about myself and the company I come from, um, just so that you better can understand and relate uh, to the stories I will, I will tell you. Uh, Alex uh, started back, like was established in 1991 in Ukraine as a product company. The product they have developed was uh, like science intensive software for power distribution systems. And the solution is still alive and might get a second life soon because of the whole situation in the energy sector. Um, but since then, they have developed also several other products like Luftronics, Dr. Alex, uh, Epigas, uh, and also started to offer custom software development um, and engineering and consulting services for external customers, basically. Uh, that's the map with our, where our clients are located, uh, some logos, the companies we worked with, uh, some key factors. Um, the company today is international with the headquarter in Tallinn. Uh, we also have an office in Berlin. But um, yeah, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, here are some highlights from my journey uh, that has brought me here. Uh, 2015, I got my master's degree, which had nothing to do with UX or even IT. Uh, then I was, uh, while I was doing my master's, uh, I was invited, like, I don't know, some stars aligned, and I ha got a part-time job in a small software development company. Uh, my assignment was to bridge the gap between the customers and the development team, and at that time they didn't have any de uh, designer on the team. And I knew a little bit of Photoshop because of photography. <laughs> uh, and that's how the whole thing started. Uh, I signed up for several trainings, courses, read a lot of books, uh, then did certifications, etc. Then I moved between the companies, uh, gained some experience. Like I met incredibly smart and intelligent people that became my mentors. Uh, and that's how I got my confidence in what I'm doing. Uh, my career growth was really rapid, uh, it impressed me even, and then, um, yeah, because like I kind of learned the, the basics, somehow understood it, I wasn't sure if it's like what all that I have to do, but it was apparently enough, and my customers were happy, my employer was happy, uh, and I believe with the combination with like good soft skills, it got me promoted to leadership position in 2020. Uh, back then, my understanding of leadership was deeply rooted in traditional leadership model with the leader as an unwavering captain steering the team through uncertainty, risks, challenges, like really confident, strong, knowledgeable. 
And I believe there are definitely people uh, who dream about becoming a captain and feel really secure in this role, but it wasn't me. <laughs> I was, that's where my imposter syndrome kicked in, and I was like, what am I doing? I'm not even up to the task. Like, what, what, like, am I even capable of doing it? Yeah, and then um, I kind of started, and today I'm staying here. Uh, having this speech today, where I want to share with you uh, some observations and learnings um, that I gained through like eight years of my career up until now in the industry. Uh, I saw some good and bad examples of leadership. I saw teams uh, unite and do incredible things, achieve the results that looked impossible at first. And I saw teams with the greatest resources fail just because of poor leadership. So where are we standing? I believe this picture with penguins describes the best current situation and the world we live in. We see the top of the iceberg and we somehow try to navigate it. Sometimes we dive deep to investigate the matter but do we get to the bottom? And on top of that, this iceberg is melting. Modern world is so unstable and at the same time interconnected, wars, viruses, natural disasters, social media, they send constant shock waves across the globe and often catching us unprepared. And how nice would it be to have a captain to guide us through? But the reality is, in the face of such instability, traditional leadership models just won't work. In our profession, we found a way to move forward. And for those, we developed two approaches. First, we uh, look into the past trying to find solutions that have worked before. We analyze the patterns and try to predict the outcomes based on historical data. But this method uh, has its limitation because context, technology, society have all evolved over time and keep changing even more. The second approach is more future-oriented where we engage in debates and discussions, uh, try to come to some agreement. Uh, we team up, we shadow workshop, we ideate, we uh, try yeah, to agree on something. Uh, it's nice to have uh, a strong leader in our team, but even they don't have a crystal ball to look into the future and bring their own biases to the table. So the only thing left is to come to some agreement, do a prototype, and put it into the test. And that's how we can figure out if we uh, are on target or completely out of the track. In this setup, what do we expect from a new leader? Is it the answer to all the questions? Probably no but better the ability to unite the team and move forward with collaborative decision-making. I like this quote from Julie Zhu uh, from the book Making of a Manager, where she describes, describes the cracks of a management. That's the belief that a team of people can achieve more than a single person doing it all alone, in the realization that you don't have to do everything yourself, be the best everything yourself, and or even know how to do everything yourself. Funny, <coughs> why didn't I read this in 2020? Um, <coughs> we also need to recognize that not all the decisions are suitable for collaborations. Of course, as managers and leaders, we still have our operational decisions. Those are routine day-to-day -day decisions about uh, um, processes, uh, resources, uh, yeah, tasks, and we can um, 
pretty okay do them on our own. Emergency decisions where uh, we just don't have enough time and need to react promptly to avoid further, this further uh, escalations. Personal development decisions for our colleagues about their goal, setting their goals, um, managing their work, work, uh, work life balance, etc. And of course, confidential and sensitive matters. But on the other hand, we have strategic decisions, complex problem solving, innovations that are perfectly fit for collaboration. Strategic decisions, uh, like high value decisions that impact long term uh, organizational goals, um, where usually the key stakeholders are involved and also senior, man, uh, senior leadership. And in best case scenario, those strategic decisions are aligned with the company vision and values. Uh, complex problem solving, of course, when you are like some pro problems are so complex that they are lacking straightforward uh, solutions. So we just uh, team up, invite additional perspectives, uh, additional um, expertise, etc. I've mentioned resources in the operational decisions as well, but sometimes we get big funding or uh, we need to allocate the budget uh, appropriately. Yeah, so sometimes we can benefit in, by inviting representatives from different departments or other uh, stakeholders. Uh, yeah, and all of the other things like, I don't know, innovation, major change initiatives, etc. If you take a closer look to the points on the right side, uh, you can notice how easily they might be put on our design frameworks. Let's take Double Diamond. As as soon as you have one of those uh, challenges, to get to the desired outcome, we go through um, diverging and converging phases of our diamonds and uh, try um, to, yeah, to come to some out outcome. And uh, yeah, we do, like for instance, research or ideation, then we are on converging, uh, diverging phase, or affinity diag diagramming or prioritizations, then we are on converging phases. And it doesn't matter, like when we, when we think about those activities, they are perfectly suited for collaboration, and very often we set up a workshop for that. So workshops as a tool, uh, I assume I don't have to tell you how to conduct workshops. You probably have a lot of, of experience with that. But I brought you three stories from my experience and three key learnings from those stories. First story is if you have already made a decision, set up a meeting to inform the team. Um, I was once invited by a C-level of a company to help them improve strategical planning process. Um, it started nice. We talked with the CEO who actually requested uh, this um, improvement and he outlined his expectations, uh, his assumptions why it might not work now. They had at the moment some process, but it wasn't working perfectly. Like not perfectly, like not delivering expected results. Uh, yeah, and after that, I just scheduled individual interviews with all the C-level executives, uh, talking to them about uh, their observations, their expectations, and yeah, figuring out, like gaining some insights about the current process. Uh, and I have to admit, those were the most uh, emotional interviews I have ever conducted. <laughs> and after that, of course, like as we usually do, we analyze the results, findings, clustered them, prioritize them. We set up like several workshopping sessions. It was going great. And I was actually pretty happy with the results. But then the CEO calls me in and says, you know what, I really like the way we are working and the results, but here are some adjustments. And the adjustments was a complete vision on how the future pro process have, uh, should look like. And that's where I realized that he had this vision from the beginning. He just wanted to mask it as if it was, as if it was collaborative decision. I was so frustrated. The whole team was frustrated. We spent so many, so much resources for that. So 
yeah, the learning here is to avoid frustration, communicate your decision, individual decision, as it is in a meeting, and have courage to take responsibility for that. My second story uh, and second learning is not everything which involves sticky notes and whiteboard is called a workshop. Um, there was this client whose team I joined, and the moment I joined them, they told me, you know what, we have workshops with our experts every week. And in those workshops, we define how to move forward, like the features that we will build next. I thought, wow, how great is that? <laughs> we will be having the workshops every week. Uh, but then I joined such a workshop. And it looked like, like this. They had a Miro board, and they had sticky notes on it, and they wrote questions. And during the workshop, the facilitator shared the screen. They were not even on the whiteboard, like in the tool. They just shared the screen, read the questions out loud, and noted the answer on other empty sticky notes. Uh, and there was one dominate, dominating voice there who was directly answering all the questions, and other participants just agreed. And it might be that those dominant one was right, but it also might be that the others, they just, uh, yeah, they didn't want to interfere or were not engaged enough to, uh, yeah, to express their opinions. Uh, would you call it a workshop? <laughs> I wouldn't. It was for me. It was like really weird form of an interview. Uh, but uh, of course, I understand. Sometimes you don't have resources or time to conduct a full cycle of interviews. But I mean, in workshopping, you can assign individual assignments, and you can even to save time, you can do it in advance as a homework, and then just compare results, discuss the differences. And that's how everyone gets hurt. And then, uh, yeah, you can agree on a maybe better solution for that. And the third learning is invite relevant people for collaboration. And that's a story from a corporate world. Imagine a company with a structure like the roots of a really, really old tree. Like we're managers upon managers upon managers upon managers, and somewhere down there are folks who actually work. Uh, and this management circle uh, meets every quarter to review the roadmap and plan the next phase. Uh, sounds plausible, <laughs> but then we face the reality where the project is falling apart. Uh, teams are not able to meet the targets, nothing gets delivered in a proper way. Uh, there are, they figure out about the interdependencies to external systems too late in the process. The knowledge transfer takes ages because one team has to pick up where the other team has left. Yeah, looks like a little bit of chaos. And the question is, what went wrong? Participation list. Uh, the thing is, to make the best decisions, especially collaboratively, you need people with the best judgment and people with the best context. And those are often not the same. As managers, we, or leaders, we might have the best judgment about, yeah, about the timeline, about the limitation, deadlines, fundings, etc. Uh, but we often are not that deep in the context to identify those, those risks, dependencies. And that's why it's really beneficial sometimes to invite people for collaboration and uh, yeah, to come to even to such planning activities altogether. Now, I want to come back to the word courage. Why courage? What I often observe that not as good leaders, to my opinion, of course, are not those who are completely incompetent. Like, that's not the problem. But the problem is they, that they stick to their steering wheels too, too strong. 
And collaboration, it requires giving your power away and sharing it with those around you. Research shows that uh, a new quality emerged among modern daring leaders. And this quality is the ability to embrace vulner vulnerability. How can you lead a team in those times when you cannot handle uncertainty, risk, emotional exposure? And actually, vulnerability is not a weakness. It's our greatest measure of uh, courage. That's why I want to quote here uh, Brenna Brown uh, with like some description about the vulnerability from her book, Atlas of the Heart. We have found that across cultures, most of us were raised to believe that being vulnerable is being weak. This sets up an unresolvable tension for most of us because we were also raised to be brave. There is no courage without vulnerability. Courage requires the willingness to lean into uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. And uh, recently I saw on LinkedIn, Julie Zhu, who I have quoted previously, uh, posted a, a, like some thoughts, seven incredibly non-intuitive things about growing your career. And the second point of that post, I want to uh, bring it to you. We think that uh, the most confident person in the room is the one who sounds the most polished and certain. In reality, the most confident person is the one who most readily admits and accepts their flaws and mistakes. Imagine how secure must one feel to do that. And my last thought for today is that courage is contagious. Leading by example, we foster the collaboration culture in our teams, where everyone can oftenly ask for advice, for opinions, for help, challenge their own ideas, and that becomes a new normal. And in this culture, people feel more as an essential part of a team and not just cock in a wheel. Cock in a machine, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and remember, it doesn't matter how visionary you are, for success you always need your team on your side. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, here are some contacts, uh, my LinkedIn contacts.